Good morning. I am honored and humbled to be speaking with you today. We gather here today because it matters. It matters that we remember and show our gratitude to the men and women who sacrificed their lives so that we may live out our lives with our endowed freedoms and rights in the greatest democracy in the greatest country the world has ever known. In recent days, our nation may have been divided by partisan politics, but on this day, we can come together. We can share our sorrow, we can share our appreciation, and pay tribute to those who left their homes, left their families to protect us and never ever return. My words here are feeble, for the sight before us is that of a strong and good nation that stands in silence and remembers those who are loved and those who return love their countries enough to die for them. Feeble as my words may be, we must try to honor these men and women, not for their sake alone, but for our own, because it matters. And if words cannot repay the debt we owe these men and women, surely with our actions, we must strive to keep faith with them and with the vision that led them to battle and the final sacrifice. Our first obligation is to them and ourselves is plain enough. The United States and the freedom for which it stands, our freedom, our democracy for which they died, must endure and must prosper. Their lives remind us it is not that freedom is not fought cheaply. It imposes a burden, and just as they whom we commemorate are willing to sacrifice, so must we, in a less final and heroic way, be willing to give of ourselves. As we honor their memory today, let us pledge, pledge that their life, their sacrifices, their value shall be justified and remembered for as long as God gives life to this nation. And let us also pledge to do our utmost to carry out what must have been their wish, that no other generation of young men and women will ever have to share their experiences and repeat their sacrifices. The willingness to give their lives so that others might never, so that others might live, never fails to evoke in us a sense of wonder and mystery. One gets that feeling here at this monument. And I have known that same feeling as I've looked out across the rows of white crosses and stars of David in the cemeteries in Normandy and the military cemeteries here in our land. Each one marks a resting place for an American hero. They gave their lives in my lifetime in faraway places such as Chosen Reservoir in Korea, Yai Drang Valley in Vietnam, in Baghdad in Fallujah, and Kabul at Afghanistan. They span several generations of young Americans, all different and yet all alike. All alike like the markers above their resting places. All alike in a truly meaningful way. Today we must also ask the question, where do these men and women come from? Where do we find men and women who will charge into battle, who will fill who will fly into deadly flak and who will sail into dangerous waters. We find them here in our own backyard, in our neighborhoods. They are our sons, our daughters, students today in high school and colleges. We see them on the athletic field, in the libraries, and in our streets every day. Winston Churchill said of those he knew in World War II, they seem to be the only young men and women who could laugh and fight at the same time. A great general in that war called them our secret weapon, just the best darn kids in the world. Each died for a cause they considered more important than his own life. They didn't volunteer to die. They didn't want to die. They volunteered to defend the values for which men have always been willing to die if need be. The values which make up the United States of America. Let me take a minute this morning to share with you a story story that happened close to here and, and has a 
really had a great effect on me over my life. If you'll remember, these are, we're talking about the best darn kids. Bob Rates and Mike Dunn were two nondescript young boys who graduated in high school in 1964. You might be familiar with Bob's brother, Ron Rates. Ron was a, a popular disc jockey on WLBL years ago. Ron passed away several years ago, and he told me the story. Bob and Mike grew up at, with, near each other. Bob Rates and Mike Dunn grew up near each other on Transit Road just east of Alton. They became friends, both coming from working class families. They were not standout athletes, or were they voted most popular or most likely to succeed. They found common ground in their love for cars and the awesome music of the 60s. I suspect their happiest days included time with their heads spent under the hoods of their cars. Outwardly, neither boy displayed outward signs of being adventurous or overly patriotic. However, like thousands and thousands of other boys across the nation, both were drafted. I am sure they were not overjoyed, but both knew it was their duty to report and to serve their country. These were not privileged people. They did not seek any deferments. They did not try to flee to Canada or France. They fulfilled their duty to the community and to their nation. They served. On April 10th, 1967, Bob Rates was killed by small arms fire in Long An Province in the Republic of Vietnam. He did not live to celebrate his 21st birthday, which would have been in October. Many of you, I'm sure, have seen the movie Private Ryan, Saving Private Ryan. There is a scene there where a woman is silently drying dishes at her kitchen sink and gazing out the window. She sees an army green sedan pull into her driveway. No words are spoken, but she instinctively knows of the awful news that is being delivered. She had four sons serving overseas. Three of them had landed on the beaches of Normandy on June 6th. That scene played out many times in our country's history. When I spoke with Bob, he told me he was home from school that day. Now I want you to just bring yourself back, I know you don't want to do this, but six weeks of time weather-wise, because this is early April. <clears throat> he told me that he was home from school that terrible day, and the green staff car pulled into their driveway. His father was working in the orchard nearby and spotted the car first. Now you can imagine your son is your oldest son, your firstborn, is 10,000 miles away in a war, and you see a green staff car coming down the road you live on. He knew what the appearance of the olive green car meant. In his anxiety and his determination to get to the house, in his pick, he got his pickup truck stuck, stuck in the orchard. Mrs. Rates was initially left to greet the officers by herself. As they knocked on the door, Mrs. Rates ignored the knocking. When Ron told his mother there was someone at the door, Ron said she looked right at the people at the door, turned to him and said, no, there isn't, Ron. He said, but Ma, and at this time, she sent him to his room. Mom, Rob, Bob Rates' mother, got a title that day that no mother wants, that a gold star mother. After Bob's remains arrived in New Fame, Ron rode with his grandfather to the funeral home. And against the advice of the funeral director, his grandfather was determined to see his son one last time. He left Ron out in the car and went into the funeral home. And when he came out, he told Ron, after, asked, after reviewing the remains, that that was a huge mistake. You see, Southeast Asia weather is not kind to human remains. Ron told me his family changed forever as, as Bob, after Bob's death, never again putting up a Christmas tree or celebrating holidays. When Michael Dunn, his very best friend, heard of his death, he was devastated. 
He was still stateside at the time, and he was determined to attend his friend's funeral. He managed to do just that. I'm not sure if the leave was authorized or not, but he got there and he attended the funeral. After all, this was his best friend. Michael returned to his unit and was later shipped off to Vietnam. He there told everybody at that funeral he was going to go back and, av and avenge the death of his best friend. Seven months after his friend was killed, Michael Dunn was killed in Quang Nai province. By friendly fire when a short artillery round landed nearby him. Bob and Mike are not unique. These stories have been repeated tens of thousands of times during our nation's history. That is why we gather here today. Bob and Mike's mothers became gold star mothers within a year of each other. That is why we pay tribute. That is why we are here to remember because it really does matter. Thank you very much. Thank you.